Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game ATW, or All Time Wrestling by Caution Arts. In this game, you'll be playing as a wrestler. Wrestling, another wrestler. You could do this uh, in a single player variant, a double trouble variant for four players, or you can play a one-on-one -on -one match. Each player is going to receive a deck of cards and their favorite wrestler, along with their HP and stamina, and some dice that you'll be utilizing to try and pin down your opponent. You'll also be getting player aids, and you're going to be drawing cards and bashing combos together, trying to decimate your opponent's HP to bring them low enough to pin them. If you can pin your opponent, you win the game, and we'll take a look at the game right now, how to set the game up, and of course, how to play, and finally, my review. To begin setup for the game ATW, the first thing you'll do is select your favorite wrestler from the one supplied. Then you're going to take their player board and deck and set them in front of you. After that, you will place your stamina token on the highest point of stamina and HP on the highest point of HP, utilizing the red and the yellow token. Then you're going to take your one-time use tokens and place them on your one-time use abilities, and of course your reversal token and place it on your reversal ability as well. After that, you're going to take the momentum board and place the fire icon uh, in the middle of the playing track. Give every single player a player aid card, and then have each player draw five cards. Then select a first player by having each player roll a die. The higher roll is the one who gets to go first. And you'll be selecting the five cards you'll be utilizing from the deck of cards. After you've selected your five cards, make sure that the HP damage is not over nine. And the player who goes first is going to have to get rid of one of the cards from their hand and place it back into the deck. After that, you should have the first player with four cards and everything on their board set up, the momentum track set up, and the other player with five cards and the same thing should apply. And you should be able to begin the game. Playing the base version of All Time Wrestling is fairly simple. It's going to involve one player who has momentum and the other player who does not. The player who starts the game has momentum and the other player is the defending player. When you have momentum, you are going to use your player art uh, card or aid for the when you are attacking side. And there are three things that you can do. You can either A, you can draw a card and lose your initiative, passing it to the other opponent. You can gain three stamina and you lose your initiative, which is important because you need stamina to play cards. And finally, you can play a card. Playing a card is your bread and butter. It's what's going to allow you to play combos, do attacks, body slams, flying cross bodies, running pummel slams, and uh, clothes lines as well. When you play these cards out, you're going to look at the stats of the card. It'll tell you how much HP it will subtract from your opponent, how much stamina is required, what is your target number, when rolling dice in order to succeed, and of course how much momentum is increased whenever you succeed with this card. On the bottom of the card is going to indicate on the left and right hand sides specific power combos that you can play. So when you play one, you can play another, and thusly it will reduce or increase uh, the damage and or the amount of uh, cost for the target you'll need to succeed. So whenever you attach certain colors, it will give you a benefit when doing so. So playing multiple cards of the same different or the same types is going to be beneficial for you. Um, and of course, if you succeed with your attack, you can continue going. However, the defending player has some options as well. You, they can spend two stamina to block three consecutive attack uh, damage of two or less. Or they can discard two cards as long as it's not a finisher for any attack. So if, they, if I play an attack on you, if you want, you can discard two cards from your hand, which is also a value to you. You want to kind of keep those cards, but maybe you need them more than your age. Maybe you need your HP more than them. As long as it's not a finisher, you can block it. Other things you can do are use one-time abilities or reversals. Your one-time abilities and reversals are one-time uses only. You're going to take the tokens off and do what they say. Usually it's going to involve you paying some sort of uh, stamina and of course making your opponent suffer in some way. It's all specifically stated on the specific player boards of each of the different wrestlers. However, if you're not able to do any of these uh, above, then you're going to have to pass and let the other opponent keep the initiative. That being said, whenever you succeed in an attack, you'll be pushing momentum towards your side of the board. And as you push it, you'll be going into the yellow and red spaces on the momentum track. That is going to allow you to garner additional uh, uh, ease, ease of play when it comes to rolling these dice for hitting those targeted numbers. You always want to be on one side of the board as to the other because it'll make it easier for targeting your opponent and thusly doing damage. 
And finally, how do you pin? So it, you've gained initiative, your opponent is at very low HP, how are you going to pin with your opponent? Well, there are certain abilities on cards. You'll be able to choose one of them, and one of them is going to involve pinning. In the bottom left-hand side, will say pin, and what you're going to need to do in order to pin your opponent is play it and choose that ability. Your opponent is then going to have to roll their dice. They're going to take dice, they're going to roll them, and if the die number is not lower than or equal to their HP, they will be considered pinned. And they can do this up to three times. Times. However, you'll be not able to do that three times if certain things apply. There's certain card abilities that will change that, and there's also certain uh, aspects of the momentum track or your player board that can change that as well. But regardless, if they do not get their targeted number by the amount of times they can roll to get it free from pin, they have been pinned and they are out of the game. It's a pretty simple, straightforward, straight forth, back and forth style wrestling game, utilizing cards and abilities to try and attempt to bring your HP, uh, your opponent's HP, down to as low as possible and then finally pin them. You're not actually looking to kill your opponents, you're just simply looking to tire them out and thusly once you can get them to that tired out stage you can push for that pin and you have to have that pin card in order to do so. Along with of course a bunch of extra different combos, uh, things that you can do that will involve uh, specific slams and whatnot. There's certain abilities that you can utilize on the cards, so you can always choose one of them. They're going to get you to where you need to be in order to succeed. Always remember to use your abilities as if you as, as carefully as you possibly can because if you run out that's it for you on those one-time abilities and of course there's also an infinite ability that you do have on the top right hand side of your player board but otherwise, that's the basic idea of the game All Time Wrestling. Now, like I said, there is a campaign story mode for a single player that plays, from what I've told, a little similar to the style of the game, but you're playing against a computer. And then there's also the Double Trouble component, which you're going to be playing a two or four player game where you play, I think, two on two, which is kind of interesting as well. I've included some of the characters here, which I believe are called Andre the Giant and Randy Savage, which you may have heard of. They're going to be included in additional variants of the game that you can take a look at on the Kickstarter. So. Let's talk about my review now. All Time Wrestling is a hand management slash card management game that also involves the management of the tokens on your board, how much stamina you can have, and of course the amount of uh, HP that you're going to be under. There's certain abilities that can keep you from going too far below in your HP, but there's going to be a cost, and there's a cost to everything in this game. If you want to do this, you'll have to utilize this. If you want to utilize these, you'll have to sacrifice these, and you're constantly trading back and forth, and that's the theme of this based on wrestling. Now, when I was in high school, I was a high school wrestler. I participated in a lot of things called the uh, Sunset League and tournaments and whatnot, and this game does a good job of explaining how that kind of works. Your objective is to tire your opponent up to the point where they're unable to fight back, unable to kind of defend against themselves, and they have to utilize all their exertion to kind of break free from a pin. But the more tired out they are, the more difficult and more challenging it's going to be. They have specific unique abilities that they can provide with themselves, like for me, mine was the head and arm, and for maybe the British Bulldog, it's going to be something called the Shades of Wembley, or whether he wants to or not. And each character has their kind of own signature move. Now this is a little different than my style of wrestling, mine was like folk kind of wrestling, this is more of like the WWE type wrestling, <laughs> but I think it still applies here and how it makes sense. Now, this has a lot of theme in it. Each of the characters function differently. Their decks are all unique, and the fact that you can kind of choose your starting hand to begin the game, and then after that, things start getting a little bit more random based on the cards you get and how much stamina you have to utilize the cards. There's kind of a nice ease of play variant that kind of lends you into a more complex variant as well. You can start using all the different types of powers. You can start using all the different types of abilities, and as you get better and progress, you'll start seeing the different combos that are involved in the game, as well as even the bottom portions of the card. You kind of can ignore those if you want for your first game and start realizing the different types of combos that you can kind of apply to the game to make it more easier for you to be able to pin your opponents. This game can be rather quick, this game can be kind of complex and take a little bit longer. It really just depends on how you guys play. And of course, for your first starting games like mine, we're going to be a little bit more quicker, a little bit more like less knowing, like what should I best do and how is the best way to uh, utilize my cards and my stamina. And you'll start to see it as you play those cards and as you play those combos. And also you have to learn about when is best to use certain abilities because if you're out of those pin cards, you're going to be in trouble. You need to keep those when it's best to do so. And if you run out of those, you are uh, dead in the water. 
It's also nice because these player aids are very, very straightforward and simple, but they give you a lot of choice. Do you want to utilize cards from your hand to break out of a pin? Uh, do you want to spend your stamina? Do you want to utilize one of your one-time abilities? And uh, of course, there's always your opponent missing their attack, and that can happen as well, in which case the momentum can go to you, or you're the initiative. And the momentum track is also very important as well. This track is going to be moving back and forth along here, and based on where it is at, you're going to gain a benefit. You want to push it as far as you can, have the most momentum, because that's the most important, not only for the crowd, but also for yourself to continue to feel that, like, like that luster, right? And it, it proves so, because you're going to be able to roll your targets easier, your opponent's going to be more disoriented, and, and like I said, it feels really well when you're moving this track over, and it makes sense how the cards work and how they combine with each other. Um, this is a card game that involves a little bit of strategy, a little bit of in-depth thinking, and of course it's going to involve some dice rolls. People that will not like this game, or typically people who are not going to enjoy having enjoy having to roll these dice to hit those combos because on the occasion you're gonna roll a one and if you're a player that feels like you roll lots of ones or people who do not like any luck based games at all it's probably one to stay away from because you're going to be chucking these dice now of course there's mitigating factors there's ways you can increase combos to reduce the targeting effects and of course the way to keep your HP above the low threshold to make sure that you're almost able to always escape provided that your opponents don't downright demolish you in certain roles. Uh, there's ways to kind of counterbalance the dice rolls, but it is there in the game and it is presented there. And it's also basically a card game that utilizes a board to keep track of stats. And it's going to be about you dumping cards on your own opponent and them not being able to fight back. <laughs> and that's kind of the idea of the game. It has all the old school wrestlers in here, which I really appreciate as well. It brings me back to those 90s times watching these guys. There's Kurt Angle and the British Bulldog. You have Jax Felix and uh, Mukundi Shumba, which I've never heard of actually before, but some of you more uh, wrestling fans from that era probably have. As far as I'm gathering, all these guys are ones that were wrestlers at the time, and uh, they're kind of like the old school guys. I mean, there's specifically, I already know Andre the Giant. In fact, I know him from The Princess Bride, which most of you have probably seen, and of course, Randy Savage. I'm guessing there's probably more wrestlers available on the Kickstarter, as well as different variants. And what this game pre presents in variants is nice. The artwork, the quality, the style is all great. It feels fun. It feels cartoonish. The characters are all over the top, which is great for this type of wrestling game and if you like card games that have a little bit of a take that a little bit of a chance and a lot of comboing and mitigation then this is something that's going to be for you I had a lot of fun with this one um, I think it's gonna vary with different people I played with some of the gals not so much their type of a game but a lot of the guys we played I played with uh, really really enjoyed this one I think maybe it's just they weren't as much into the wrestling as some of the guys I played with were but of course then there was a Alicia and she beat me and she always has fun beating me in these type of games so I, I guess that works out well for her as well anyway it doesn't really matter as long as she whoops me which is 99 percent of the time overall though all-time wrestling is a ton of fun i really really greatly enjoyed this game and if you are a wrestling fan male or female this is going to be something you should definitely check out especially those reliving the past moments sitting there on the couch watching these guys go crazy on each other haven't seen a lot of wrestling since this era but i really enjoyed it when i watched it and this kind of brought back those memories of fun excitement and joy as well as of course and the fact that I remembered myself getting pummeled in wrestling quite a bit, and this brought back those memories as well. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game ATW or All Time Wrestling. If you're interested in picking up this title, it's currently on Kickstarter. You can go ahead and check that link down below in the description where you can go ahead and back this game along with whatever else it comes with on there. I'd be curious to see what the 2v2 variant is, or the double trouble feature as it's called. I haven't played that, I've only played the one-on-one -on -one variant, so I don't have anything to say about the other two variants other than they exist, and if you like solo play games and double trouble games, then this is going to be something to take a look at. You can also go check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. You can watch us review games similar to this, but not this one. You can also go ahead and check out our live stream yes our live stream every sunday at 6 30 p.m pst where we play games live on stream you got it on youtube on twitch on facebook every sunday 6 p.m pst do not miss out it's a lot of fun we play these type of games all the time and party games of course as well and finally you can go ahead and join us here on youtube by subscribing to the channel hit the subscribe button the bell notification button and of course like this video share this video and comment on this video if it's something that is interesting to you but most importantly do check out the game atw I like to keep some old school wrestling vibes alive. I think you guys are going to dig this one for those wrestling fans out there. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to full Nelsoning you next time.